Missouri at Georgia is the early leg of the CBS doubleheader Saturday. It's 3.30 Eastern kickoff there in Athens. It's a blessings bowl. I would call this the blessings bowl. Blessing number one, Eli Drinkwitz is sitting there seven and one, destiny in hand. I mean, all of it, playoff destiny included, SEC championship destiny in November in Columbia, Missouri is still in hand. So how about that? That's a blessing. Number two, you may not believe me on this. This is a blessing for Kirby Smart as well because he gets meat to feed his team. Now, there's a misnomer out there that coaches want the easiest, easiest path possible to you know whatever their end goal is. No, competitors don't think that way, actually. They love the challenge. They, they love it and embrace it. And Kirby Smart can all he wants to sit there at media days and say, we're going to play this season out regardless. It doesn't matter who's on the opponent or on, on the schedule. It has mattered the whole time. He's been livid about it. He hated how soft their schedule looked. He just never admitted to you. I'm admitting it for him. Doesn't matter now. It's not so soft anymore. Immunity. You, you had Kentucky top 20 when they came in there. You hung half a hundred on them, coincidentally. You had Florida last week, and that began a stretch of Florida, and then Missouri, Ole Miss, Tennessee, all top 20, and it just didn't look like that was going to be the case preseason. So don't judge a schedule, at least in Penn, in August. That's the first lesson. And it's a blessing for Kirby Smart because you get the best out of your organization. Maybe not you. I don't think Kirby Smart needs a ranked opponent to get up, but he also knows not everyone's wired exactly like him, and so it helps. This is meat Red meat to toss in there. It helps. And number three in the Blessings Bowl pecking order here, season ticket holders for Georgia. Because this was a woof line of games preseason. And I don't know if you guys have ever won back-to-back national championships before. Probably not. But let me tell you what happens to season ticket prices when you do. They go that way. They go up. And if you're asking me to shell out that kind of dough for UT Martin, Ball State, UAB, Kentucky, Vandy, uh, Missouri, Ole Miss. Not all those games were even at home, by the way. Uh, I'm going to say, are you serious? And then they're going to say, yeah, if you get out of line, though, you miss out for the rest of eternity. And so you just shell out the money, but you hate it. Well, now all of a sudden, you got ranked matchups, multiple, that we didn't know were possible. So it's a blessings bowl, but I'll tell you what it could be also. It could be a chaos moment in the SEC East. Because I don't know if you realize this. But Missouri could win this game. I don't know if anyone's told anyone. FanDuel current number there, Georgia minus 15 and a half, not 50 and a half. So it, it may be unlikely, but it's possible. And if that were to happen, and Missouri led this game by 10 with nine minutes to go in regulation last year, if that were to happen, I cannot in strong enough terms state how chaotic the world would become. Because Missouri would then be in the driver's seat to go to Atlanta because of what happened one afternoon. They would have, Jesse, what's their remaining schedule, did you tell me? Then they got Florida left. They've got, I think, Tennessee left. So we'll, we'll look at their schedule in a second. I probably should have run that by you. They've got Tennessee, Florida, and Arkansas left. They would be in the driver's seat. And remember, Georgia would need them to lose another game. They do have one conference loss, but they'd have the tiebreaker at that point. So anyway, it would be very interesting because Georgia would still have a trip to Neyland Stadium on their hands as well. Oh, by the way, this, this would be interesting for Tennessee as well. So a lot rides on this. If you want chaos root for Missouri, I will tell you this. It's going to be an uphill battle for Missouri. And when we have big point spreads, we like to ask, how would the upset happen on this show? So you've, number one, Got three, yeah, three things Missouri needs to do. Number one, you would need to invert your defensive profile. You're 27th against the run and 63rd against the pass right now, and you are catching one of the hottest quarterbacks in the country. Now, I think that goes hand in hand with what number two is. And to me, you've also got to invert your turnover tendencies. So history in this particular spot sometimes says, when you got a first-year starter at quarterback who's really heating up, there's just one total egg that's coming because there's, there's overconfidence that creeps in the room and he starts seeing windows that are maybe a little bit bigger than they actually are and you have a turnover game and it's actually 
his premium confidence that is being used against him if you dial up the right defensive game plan. That's what history generically says could happen here. But here's the problem. Georgia doesn't do it. They just don't turn the ball over. And it's not by accident. It's not even a huge luck thing this year. Mike Bobo just puts his guys in really high percentage positions. And Carson Beck knows not to make catastrophic mistakes. So I'm not saying it couldn't happen, but they don't do it. And you're 107th in the country at forcing it. That's got to invert. Number three, you've got to invert your third down profile. Missouri's offense is 60th in the country at third down conversion rate. Georgia's defense is the best in America at that. Georgia's offense is third best in America at that. And Missouri's defense is 62nd in America at that. So a lot of inversion has to happen. Kind of a meteorological term. It's what we're looking at in winter sometimes to ignite that wintry precipitation. We need some inversion. Well, I, I go back to last year. Not that this game means anything in terms of this year. It may even grab George's attention. But I go back to last year, and I was in the Rose Bowl of all places looking after my stuff so it didn't get stolen. I was in the, no, I love the Rose Bowl, but an unfortunate thing happened there last week. We'll talk about it later. I was in the Rose Bowl last year, and I was, I was nice and warm because it was Southern California late in the year, and I'm watching on a side monitor, I'm watching Jenny Dell just – shake and freeze interviewing Kirby Smart after somehow they just pulled that game out. They were down 10 with nine minutes to go. I mean, people just forget about that totally because you remember Georgia's run last year and anytime someone wins a national championship, the revisionist history version is, oh, dude, they just salted the earth. It was just a death march all year. They do this with the, with the 01 Miami team a lot. Well, that's not exactly how it happened last year. Missouri had them down two possessions late in the fourth quarter, but Georgia came back and won. And I remember thinking that day, who could have ever seen this? It makes no sense. Like, where did this come from? It's football. That's why, despite what this paper says, I'm going to insist they go ahead and play the game. And last year, Missouri had six scoring drives and five of them were field goals. What if they just do that with Georgia? What if they just force field goals? It's no guarantee of anything. Georgia may shut you out, but it gives you a fighting chance. Let's take a look at what the model thinks. Colin, right now, FanDuel has Georgia minus 15 and a half. That total is in the mid-50s. I think 56 and a half right now. The model leans Georgia, and it leans it pretty heavily, or them pretty heavily. I, I read everything I told you I think has to invert for Missouri. I just think it's a little too much. And I'm the guy, by the way who picked Florida to cover last week. So it's not that I think Georgia's invincible or anything like that, but man, you got a tall task on your hands if you're going to go in there and outplay them because I think that's what you got to do. You got to outplay Georgia. They're not handing you the game. I don't think that will happen. And so if Missouri does it, they got talent on the lines of scrimmage. They got really good scrappy dudes. But the problem is the kind of spot – scrappiness beats Georgia in is a spot Georgia's not paying attention to. I think you got Georgia's full attention. Your success this year actually works against you a little bit this week because you got their full attention. And so I'm going to pick Georgia to win and cover. And not going to make it a best bet. The model kind of wants me to. Not going to make it a best bet, but I think Georgia's going to win. I think Georgia's going to cover.